We're pretty excited about our work package um, because it directly addresses one of the most urgent issues that faces millions of European citizens, namely needless poverty traps. Uh, the vast majority of people with cognitive disabilities are disproportionately affected by poverty traps in our welfare system. Uh, we're trying to find innovative ways that are more or less uh, treasury neutral to the state of incentivizing the growth of wealth and assets for people with intellectual disabilities so that by the time they reach their 40s, 50s, uh, they will not only have their social entitlements but maybe a growing uh, asset pile that they can use for whatever purpose they wish with the supports that are available to them. Well, for example, if you wish to make yourself eligible for certain social benefits, uh, you cannot exceed certain capital thresholds, which means there's actually a perverse uh, incentive to expend your resources rather than to accumulate them for use at a, at a future date. Well, it means that if you wish to avail of the right to housing, uh, you're going to have to spend down whatever um, funds that you have saved, which means your savings will never exceed a very low threshold of maybe 8,000 euros, which for the average citizen is simply not uh, a viable option. In fact, what happens is governments incentivize third parties to invest in capital funds, and those funds uh, grow to the mutual advantage of the investors as well as the beneficiary. The government may forego um, some income in the short term, but long term it does alleviate dependence on, on the welfare system. I think it speaks to um, the underlying revolution that's already underway under our noses, which is that our social model is not financially viable anymore. Um, it probably produced perverse outcomes and it certainly imprisoned people in the sense that they were not enabled to grow the kind of resources they would need to be genuinely independent in their own lives. So it's part of a bigger picture which has to do with the changing face of the European social model. I think because it's going to provide evidence as to the viability of this concept of asset accumulation um, and evidence that will, as it were, allay the fears of some of the policy makers and create a new space for a new kind of dialogue and discussion about how we can uh, really reimagine the welfare system to produce you know, good outcomes for individuals as well as good outcomes for society. Um, th there's yet to take place an open debate and dialogue about the need for these kinds of financial incentives. Um, this is a fresh idea that's happening in some countries around the world. So what we're trying to scope out is whether it would, it would fit with uh, existing European arrangements or whether those arrangements need to be substantially modified to create space for it. So we need people at the table who would be people involved in finance ministries, people involved in social affairs ministries, um, the European Commission obviously, and civil society most assuredly. Uh, well, curiously enough, this is taking root um, outside of Europe before it's taken root in Europe. Um, so in a way it's bringing that innovation from certain other countries and jurisdictions like British Columbia back to Europe. So Europe is quite far behind in terms of its thinking on this. So the research is not really going to enable Europe to take a lead. The, the research is simply going to create space in Europe to try out the innovation that's happening elsewhere in the world. Well, this is why um, there's going to be an in-depth analysis of the reality of poverty traps in the European system, which will require an in-depth uh, investigation. It's, it's one thing to say that here's the innovation. It's quite another thing to be able to say uh, here's exactly what it will address and here's how it will fit. So that part of the research is going to be innovative and new and nothing like it has happened before.